Now, it came off of there, so I know it's got to go back on. Let's think about this a moment. Well, shoot. Well, Nomies, it's good to be with you once again. Good to have you with us here on the MT and me. It feels so good to know that we got fresh oil in Pearl. Finally got that oil change after, of course, we solved the problem with the dipstick tube and got the new one put in. So that's a whole fiasco. We're not going to go back over all that again. But, you know, you were watching. You know what happened. Point is, now... We can get back to the business of continuing to uh, work on getting Pearl's engine running. And one of the next step is uh, going to be starting the process of putting it all back together. Assuming, of course, I remember how to do it. Yeah. So, this all may involve a little bit trial and error but there's one big empty space right here that we know what goes there and that is the alternator we just have to remember exactly <laughs> how it fits in there and it starts with getting this major bolt back through here and through the mounts and into the engine block That's not as simple as it sounds, but I'm hoping it's not going to be that complicated either. Let's find out. Okay, this has to go through here and actually screw into there. Now, of course, you have to have the alternator in place as well. So, what we've got to do is... Hold the alternator here. Get this started. Put this spacer on. That goes through there. Remember correctly, this spacer goes on the back, or does it? It goes on the front. Hmm. I don't know. Let's get that started and see what happens. Maybe if I reattach this, it will actually help hold that in place a little bit. I got a feeling this spacer is going to go on the front because there's certainly no room for it on the back. So that means I got to take all this out. Let's put that on first and run this through there. And get this one in place. All right. And now, let's get that lined up, started, so that we can put it back in the engine block.
So remember when I was trying to uh, work on getting the drainage, the drainage, not the drainage, but the uh, dipstick tube lined up so that it would fit around the fuel pump and I was having a problem because I couldn't see back there. Well, it's kind of the same situation here. There's a hole on the engine block that this bolt has to go in. And I know where it is. And I've got to be right on top of it. But I really can't see it. I'm starting to wonder if maybe this spacer is actually keeping me from... Uh, getting it lined up now it came off up there so I know it's got to go back on I just have to get it in exactly the right place sounds easy doesn't it yeah okay so after a little examination I think I found the problem this brace I was trying to put it on the outside <laughs> and it goes on the back side on the inside you do that and all of your spacers fit properly you can tighten this down and you've got the alternator in place okay now change sockets and tighten this other one up We can't really position this yet because this is the tensioning setting. Whenever we put the fan belts, the accessory belts back on, then we can adjust that finally and get it firmly in place. Still have a little bit of a rock in that. I'm going to have to check that out and see. But for the time being, we're going to leave it as is. So we're not running the engine right now. And then I'll see about tightening that up a little bit later. But that gets our alternator back in position. Which is step one in reassembling the front of Pearl. Yay! Oh, I guess we do need to hook it back up, don't we? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so these are the alternator connections. Well, shoot, I dropped the nut. So, that's going to take it all out, search. And you know what? It's getting late. It's starting to rain. I'm getting frustrated. So, I think we're going to stop where we are. We'll come back tomorrow, pick this up with a <sighs> fresh sense of adventure and see if we can finish getting this alternator in. Mm.
So, it's obviously the next day, and yay, I found the nut that I dropped. Took a while. I was literally right on top of it doing the first round of searching and completely overlooked it. Decided I'd go back and look one more time, and there it was, laying in plain sight. And I also found the spacer that I dropped yesterday, too. Right now, I have a socket of the same size that's holding that place spot behind the alternator. So, we'll put this back in a little later on. That's for another day. I've got to see about tightening that thing up anyway. For now, I just want to get this last electrical connection back on. It goes right there. And this time I'm going to be smart and use a socket. All right. So, that's got the two brushes hooked up. The main connection. I think that's got our electrical taken care of now on the alternator. While we are looking at this situation, what do you say we see how the accessory belts are going to fit on the front? Not quite ready to put them on, but I'd like to see them in position. Okay, so here we are back at the front of Pearl. And, uh, let's see, I have my three fan belts here that uh, are the ones they told me I needed. That's that indefinite they the internet <laughs> and uh, I looked through all of my uh, all of my manuals on 77 motorhomes and you may remember I have three of them I know that somewhere I saw a nice full front diagram of the fan belt arrangement for this 360 engine. I, I can see it in my head. I don't remember it, but I can see where, what it looked like. And I know I saw that somewhere. It obviously was not in any of my three manuals. So I'm not sure. Maybe it was in a dream or something. However, I do have that wonderful thing called the internet. And I came up with this. Nice little diagram of three possible configurations of a late 70s 360 engine and we have this one right here with uh, the main drive the fan the power steering the alternator and the air conditioner compressor now pearl does not have an air pump but she does have an idler wheel at that location so for practical purposes the layout is the same so let's look at this and look at the belts and see if we can figure out what goes where? Right, this is my longest drive belt. And according to the diagram, I think it should go over the main drive, of course. Over the power steering. And over the alternator, which it is not going to reach. Well, okay. I uh, don't think there's any way my alternator is going to get close enough for that to fit around it. Like that is absolutely as close as it's going to go. And that's obviously not going to work. Well... That doesn't fit. Neither of the other belts is certainly going to fit. 
Ooh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. This one may be longer, uh, but it's not. No. Okay. It was doubled up, so I it was folded, and I didn't realize it. Maybe we're looking at a different configuration uh, that would fit around the idler. Of course, I don't have the fan pulley on here either. Let's see if I can do this without attaching it. It's going to sit back there. loose to go to the power steering now, the power steering is adjustable I can tighten it up so it can be moved I can take up that tension so that's I got a feeling that must be where that goes That is still not going to fit. If we go to the back, see that's rubbing on that. That's not going to work. You know what? I'm really glad that uh, I decided to do this today because I have a feeling I may not have the right drive belts because apparently only one of them is fitting and uh, it actually is fitting. Uh, no, it's not. I started to say it's fitting the way uh, yeah, I guess it is. It's fitting the way that the diagram shows it down here. Main drive, fan, and power steering. So, I've got that. Uh, it shows a separate belt going to the air pump, which in my case would just be an idle. Idler. That's really not necessary. Okay. But there is a single belt that's running up to the air conditioner and then over to the alternator on this vehicle I've got a feeling that belt is gonna have to go around this idler uh, that would get me down to just a two belt drive but my point is, this is not going to clear the fan pulley otherwise, unless it goes over there. It seems like a rather awkward run for a fan belt, or an accessory belt. I call them fan belts, and there's only one that drives the fan. Uh, they're actually accessory drive belts. That appears like it would do the trick, <laughs> but it's kind of a long way around to, to get something done. Let's see here how that's going to... It's going to have to be a whole lot longer to do that. Here again, the idler is adjustable, just like the power steering. Everything's adjustable except for the crankshaft, the fan, and the air conditioner compressor. 
these three are pretty well set in place. Uh, but the rest of them, power steering down here, and of course the alternator and the idler can all be moved in and out as necessary. So that's kind of where we are here. Uh, let me do some more checking. I think I still have my old belts that I cut off. So I will um, pull those out do some length comparisons. I swear I think I did that whenever I bought these. That's the way I came up with my lengths. Yeah, but I, I have occasionally been known to make an error in things like that. Doesn't happen often. But I admit it does happen. So maybe, maybe I was wrong at some point. Either that, or I'm just totally barking up the wrong tree as to uh, fitting all this back on the front of Pearl's motor. Um, either way, I have learned a lot, and I have some more research to do. So that uh, by the time we get together again next time here on the MT and Me, I'll have some more to tell you. What we have done today is get the alternator back on. Yay! So it's back in place. Um, the, co the electrical connections are made. I'm not sure they're absolutely as good as they can be, so I may go... See, I'd ponder changing the brushes in it. The brushes look okay, but, I mean, I've got it all torn down. Perhaps I should put new brushes in. Anyway, that's something to think about. Let me know what you think, okay? Comments below. Brushes on the alternator. The fan belt situation here several things that you can help me with so uh you guys were invaluable on the uh dipstick tube keep the info coming all right i love this contact i love getting the feedback from you so let me hear from you let me know what you think about uh maybe the alternator brushes um <laughs> whether or not i've got this thing put in correctly because i'm still kind of questioning that myself still a little loose in a couple of places and uh, and also about the the drive belts because that's that's kind of got me puzzled. I thought the drive belts were a given. I thought they were taken care of, and this is uh, an unpleasant surprise for me. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Also below, you'll find a link to the mtandme.com, a link to buy me a coffee, and of course a button that you can click quite easily and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Give me a thumbs up, a like if you've enjoyed this video. Keep watching because we're here every weekend with more work on Pearl, the MT, by me, Russ. Make sure you're part of the plan here with us, okay? My nomies, I love you. Thank you so much. Remember to comment below, and I'll see you next time around here on the MT and me. I'm Russ. Thank you for everything. We will talk later. I got some figuring to